In this video, I'll be helping you with the Alex problem type called finding x and y intercepts given a polynomial function. We're given here the function f of x and we're asked to find both the x and y intercepts. And in this case, I'll start with the y intercept. I know that a y intercept occurs when x equals zero. So to find my y value here, I can go to our function, replace x with zero, for each occurrence of x, and then we can simplify, starting with my exponents, zero to the third is zero, zero squared is zero, and 10 times zero is zero. And now doing the multiplication, negative two times zero is zero, minus eight times zero is zero. So all of my terms became zero. So when x equals zero, y equals zero, we have the y-intercept, of zero, zero. And since it's the origin, this is also one of our x intercepts. And as we look for any other x intercepts, we know that for x intercepts, our y value is zero. So here I'm replacing the function f of x with zero. So I would have zero equals on the right hand side, negative two x cubed minus eight x squared plus plus 10 x. And to solve this, since I have a function being equal to zero, I can solve it by factoring. I would first factor out a common factor, and I can see that each one of these have at least a two in common, and they all have an x. Since the leading coefficient's negative, I'll factor out a negative two x. And in the first term, if I factor out a negative two x, I'm left with x squared. In the second, if I factor out a negative two x, I'm left with a plus four x. And in the last term, if I factor out a negative two x, I'm left with a minus five. So we have factored out the greatest common factor and I can continue by factoring the quadratic in the parentheses. So since this is an x squared, it would factor, if possible, into an x and x. My c term is a minus five. So my terms have to multiply to be a minus five, but add up to a four x. If that were a plus five and a minus one, then we would have a plus five x and a minus one x, which would combine to be a four x. So we have factored completely on the right hand side. And I can see here that there are three terms being multiplied that equals zero. So either that first term minus two x is equal to zero, or the second term, x plus five equals zero, or the third term, x minus one equals zero. So looking for x intercepts here, it looks like I'm gonna have three. From the first part, we can divide by negative two on both sides and have x equals zero. So our y value is zero, our x value is zero. That's the same zero, zero that we found when we were looking for the y-intercept. It is also an x-intercept. For the second part, when I subtract the five over to solve for x, I get x equals negative five. So I do have a new x-intercept here where x is negative five and y is zero. And for the last one, I would add the one over to the other side, giving me x equals one. So here I have an x value of one and a y value of zero. So when looking for the y-intercept, I found one, zero, zero. When looking for the x-intercept, we found three. We also have zero, zero, and negative five, zero, and one, zero. So one y-intercept and three x-intercepts. 